Hey guys, today we're going to talk about the oration. Oration is a very important part of uh, the way the Romans dealt with their education. And you're going to see, as we go through this today, um, how the Romans taught their young men to talk about and to speak formally in public. Today our English teachers still use the same format, or almost the exact same format the Romans did. And that is that you body, you'll have an introduction, a body, and conclusion to whatever you do when you give a write a term paper or make a speech. So we're going to follow along with that. If you look at the way this is set up, um, you're going to be able to see that if I move this forward a little bit. Uh, the Romans started with. Three things. You got an introductio, an introduction. They had a corpus. And then they would end with a conclusio. Now, what do you make of those words? Well, you can see English words come from them. You can take the word introduction and note that just by adding the end or conclusion, just add the end, and you have the English word. Um, the middle word, the corpus, is simply the word that means the body. So we basically have the speech format that you and I would be familiar with today. An introduction, a body, and a conclusion. Now, for the Romans, the conclusion could, could be very complicated, but we're going to keep it simple. It's basically the summary and the proposal of what's been done. So you summarize the facts, you make a proposal on what should be done, how we should conclude those facts that we've just gone over. Now, the other parts are a little more complicated, but you'll see that it's very much like the way you've been taught to make speeches, or more importantly, write term papers. Let's start with the introduction. The introduction can be divided into two parts. Um, and those two parts are going to be called the exordium and the narratio. What are they? Well, you may remember that um, if you've heard a good sermon or a good speech, very often the person will try to Say something funny at the beginning. Tell a joke. So what does the exordium do? It wins favor of the audience. A priest or a pastor might start off and tell a real funny story about their childhood or something hilarious that happened along the way. Um, in a term paper, you might start off with a very important fact or a very strong statement, one that you know, kind of wins your teacher's attention. Says, oh, geez, this is going to be a good paper because it's so strongly written. It's so good. You then go, and the next thing you're going to do, if you're a good Roman, is you're going to give the narratio. And what does the narratio do? It summarizes the facts that led up to the speech that's being given. So an example would be Cicero might have said uh, in the uh, Catalinian oration, guys, we're meeting tonight and I'm speaking to you, today, to you today because there was an assassination attempt on my wife. And I'm going to put out the evidence that shows that we know who it is. So that would be the summary. In your term paper, you would, of course, be saying something like, um, there are two sides to the story, or the two very important issues, or three, whatever they are. You would summarize what the paper is going to be about, like why you can write about the topic, why it's important enough to write about. Well, what comes next? Well, you get to the body. The Romans had a very specific format for the body. You may note that the, before I get there, the narration is... The narratio, just add an end, you get the English word narration. But let's talk about the body. You're going to see there's, the first part's called the partitio, add the end to the end, you get partition. 
What does a partitio do? It's a proposal or the proposed treatment of the material. What's a Roman going to do in this place? Part, he's going to say, I'm going to take this topic and I'm going to pour out all the evidence for it. And then I'm going to pour out all the evidence against it. And then I'm going to tell you which side I go with. Or the, he might argue it differently. He goes, I'm going to go for each point along the argument, I'm going to give the pros and cons to it. So it's basically you're going to go pro, con, pro, con, pro, con, pro, con. Um, whatever that treatment is, he tells the people, and usually he'll tell them how many of them there's going to be. I had a teacher one time gave a, uh, a famous lecturer, gave this a lecture on cru the topic of crucifixion. And she started off by saying there are 77 examples of it or something number like that in ancient texts. And then she began, the first one is. And after about 10 of them, we realized she was going to do all 77. We were there for almost three hours. Um, in this case, so we were surprised. We, we wanted to die. If she had said, I'm going to do all 77, we might have all just got nothing left. The Roman uh, speaker wants a person to know what's going on. What's next? Well, the next portion of the speech is called the confirmatio. And then the related part is the refutatio. Now, either of those parts can be in either order at this point. If you look, the English words uh, will come right from it. And you can see that we could have confirmation and refutation. Well, let's come back to that. What are confirmations? Well, those are the arguments for the position that's being argued. And the refutatio is going to be the arguments against whatever's being argued for. Now, they could go in confirmatio, refutatio, or the reverse. And there could be as many of those as is necessary to get the argument on. Of course, the two English words come from it, confirmation, refutation. Um, we then, if we look at it, we can summarize what we have. We have an introduction, introductio. It has a, it's divided in two parts, an exordium and a neradio. You win the favor of the audience with the exordium. You summarize your facts in the narration or the narratio. In the body, we're going to make a proposal about how we're going to treat the, mater the material. It's called the partitio. And then we're going to have a confirmation and a refutatio, or ref confirmatio and refutatio in some order. Confirmatios are four arguments for your thing. Refutatio are arguments against. We're going to end with a summary of, and proposal of what should be done. That's called the conclusio. Now, if we look at that, what's kind of neat is we can realize that by the substitution of ends or additions of ends at the end of these words, we can get the English word that you and I know. So take a good look at that. Take good notes of this. Fill it in and submit it for me. This is the assignment. Study it. And then do me a favor. Study it. And then take the test. Thanks, guys. Uh, we get to a really good speech on Friday. Um, clearly, the vocab that you've been taking and doing uh, sets the stage for some pretty gruesome stuff. So... Have a good day. Thanks for everything and have a good night.